Yeah, this 4.0 came into the shop just over a month ago. Been putting on as many miles as I can in the meantime, so it's time for that one month review. I see you rolling up over black Cadillac, high heel boots and a sexy body for the tats. Baby's bad, oh baby's had the bad after her. There... I'm just gonna break the ice and go ahead and say it. Anybody who's saying that the 4.0 is junk has more than likely not laid hands on one. That's like looking at a brand new Corvette and saying that the engine is gutless because the 1953 Corvette had 150 horsepower. Yeah, there's still things they can fix, definitely company side, but you know, like looking at an old TV, don't let the bad picture of the past mess up the vision of the future that's right in front of you. There are some points made by various other testers and reviewers that I'd like to touch on briefly. First of all, the Fidlock. I personally find it pretty easy to use and not too fiddly once you get your strap length set accordingly, but some people prefer the old D-ring style over the Fidlock on the Atlas 4.0. Both have been proven plenty safe in testing, so it's more of a personal preference as to which one you would rather deal with. Take that for what you will and use that for your decision making. So just a few helmets out there have seen the EPS liner on the inside slide out of alignment with the eye opening. Also on these same helmets, people are saying that they feel it jostle around while they're taking the helmet on and off. Now these kind of problems slipping by tells me that their craftsmanship is still not 100% across the board. This has not been a widespread issue from what I've been able to find. Nevertheless, it has happened and it's something Rurok needs to look into actively fixing. Letting that kind of stuff slip out the door is gonna do nothing to fix their public image. And still, the chin vent. Nothing like doing some booger picking at a stoplight to try and get some more airflow. The 4.0 also came with an included smoke visor, just like previous versions, and the verbiage on the side reading track only, daytime use only, not warranted shatterproof, not ECE approved, has come up in conversations across the board. Now while this likely has something to do with other countries' outlook on tinted visors on the road, does bring a little bit of skepticism when you're out there doing some open road riding. And I really figure the verbiage about the not warranted shatter proof and the not ECE approved kind of go together because I figure the ECE has something about a shatter proof visor installed on your helmet. This is something that would be nice to see resolved in a future version if possible. But most of us don't bother knowing every letter of the law around visors anyway, and chances are this is just there to cover Rurok's butt in case you crash and you get a stick in your eye or something. And also on the subject of visors, defogging in pin locks. Well, let's be honest here, the optional pin lock is not really that optional if you live anywhere that has humidity or enough temperature differential to actually cause fogging on the visor. Yeah, you can crack that dude open a little bit for some demist, but a pin lock is pretty much a necessity, so it'd be cool to see that become standard in the helmet package going forward. Come on, guys. Now, with all that out of the way, what are my thoughts on this helmet after a month in the saddle with it? Honestly, it's still a really solid piece of equipment. This helmet has so many less issues than the old 3.0 and 2.0s did. Again, I'll reiterate that I did not really experience 3.0 because it really wasn't good enough for me to spend money on at the time. This guy, on the other hand, I took a chance and I spent the money on it to see what all the improvements were about. And I gotta say, I'm still pretty pleased. I will say the cheek pads have compressed just a little bit, but it's cool, they still got a good hold on my face, so I'm not too worried about that. The Rayon technology, thankfully I haven't needed it. So we'll just say that's probably pretty good. First person to crash, they win the review on that one. I have not personally experienced any craftsmanship issues with my 4.0 helmet either. And with that in mind, I'll stick to what I said before. I really think the pricing on these is actually pretty accurate. Yes, it's still a little bit steep, but you're actually getting into a helmet that's pretty dang good this time. That does come with a little caveat. The pricing on your standard helmet colors and that kind of stuff is pretty reasonable. Paying a premium for stickers that have teeth all over your helmet it's a little bit cheesy, let's, let's be honest here. Also, some more unique colorways would be pretty cool. Stuff along the lines of the Mercury and the Nebula. Even the Outrun is pretty awesome, minus the teeth. <clears throat> and yeah, I know the review part's pretty short and sweet, but let's be honest, the helmet's pretty good. Now they can focus on improving in other areas. Let's talk about Rurock. Product supply never fails to, well, fail. There has been a little bit of communication from Archie at Rurock that there will hopefully be a U.S. warehouse or distribution center set up sometime this year, hopefully in the summer of 2022. If they can have product on the shelf around launch times, that's going to help quell at least some of the storm that always happens whenever they launch a helmet. With that supply in place, maybe give the customers a chance to try on the helmets. Even if Rurock wants to make their own facilities or work through their affiliated people, that way they can keep the profits to themselves, not pass the product through so many hands between you and the customer or whatever. But letting a customer feel a product, touch it, smell it, 
Taste it if you're into that. Make sure it fits. It is a proven way to get sales, guys. Just something to think about, putting it out there. There will be haters either way quite a while for some of the company's practices in the past, but either way, doing things like saying, review our helmet and win your order amount back is basically a paid review. Unfortunately, that's gonna influence people to try and get on the good side of the company and have a chance at what's basically a free helmet. There's always going to be reviews out there shilling for the company and also outright hatred for the company. But as a consumer, it takes a little bit to wade through the sea of corrupted reviews out there and get down to the real, raw, honest opinions. But as they say, there's no such thing as bad press, right? Only time will tell where the company ends up in the future. But chances are the name Rurock is going to be etched into motorcycling in some way. I know we got a little sidetracked on the Rurock end of things over the helmet itself, but if you found this review helpful, or if you have any questions about the Atlas 4.0, leave a comment down below and I'll do my absolute best to answer you. As always guys, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll catch you next time.